Real high, real loud today. today. Louder today. today. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. is going to speak to me about giving. about giving. After today, After today. I, will I will know and fully understand, fully understand. That, embassy that Embassy City has a gift, has a gift. To, give. to give. That's right. There's an anointing on me that is an anointing on us. And when we give, like we really give. When we bless, we really bless. And as a result, God continues to bless us to be a blessing to others. So today, we grow in giving. Let's go. Let's go. The book of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 9. 2 Corinthians chapter number 9. I'm going to read a, a few verses here. If you're taking notes on this message, the title of this message is The Grace to Give. Simply, The Grace to Give. I have such an excitement uh, about sharing this because... Um, there is a there is a a grace on this house to give. And when we talk about giving, the thing that's been interesting to me in the past is as I was raised up in church, uh, the only time I heard messages on giving is when people weren't giving. And, and so, so there would be a message that came, and it usually had a sharp point on it. Uh, the point at the end of the message was usually manipulative. Uh, it was usually um, to uh, 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 garner an, an emotion um, uh, to, to, to then get you uh, to do something that, that maybe you did not want to do, could not do, felt guilty not to be able to do or felt like you were going to be shamed if you did not do. So I, my excitement comes from the fact that I, I'm teaching a message on giving today uh, to some people that already have a grace to give. And so, and so I just want to give you a context to why I'm so excited uh, to be able to do that for you. So here's what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter number 9. Starting at the sixth verse, it says this. Remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must each decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. God will generously provide all you need then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. As the scriptures say, they share freely and give generously to the poor. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. For God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. Yes, you will be enriched in every way so that you can always be generous. And when we take your gifts to those in need, uh, to those who need them, they will thank God. So two things will result from this ministry of giving. The needs of the believers in Jerusalem will be met, and they will joyfully express their thanks to God. As a result of your ministry, they will give glory to God for your generosity uh, to them and to all believers will prove that you are obedient to the good news of Christ. And they will pray for you with deep affection because of the overflowing grace God has given to you. Thank God for this gift, two wonderful four words. Good verse. The grace to give. Uh, bow your heads, let's pray over the words, shall we? Holy Spirit, give us more grace to give. In Jesus' name, amen. It's one of my favorite passages in Scripture because uh, uh, Paul is talking to the Corinthian church. Uh, they are 
uh, uh, raising some money for the home church in Jerusalem where everything all started. And, and Paul makes some, some, some statements uh, that, that I haven't heard in most church, setting, uh, church settings uh, centered around giving. Uh, uh, Paul makes some statements that, that are, are, are so clear and so concise that it leaves no room for error uh, in the appeal. He says, hey, listen, we're coming uh, to collect a gift for our, the home church in Jerusalem. We want you to be a part of it, and, and we want you to give. But we want you to give uh, 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 basically based on what's in your heart. Don't, don't give reluctantly, and don't give in response to pressure. I don't know where that verse was. It's like I'm today years old reading it based on some of the, 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 the churches and, and, and conferences that, that I grew up in where, 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 where an offering appeal could literally last 90 minutes. I, I mean, you, you thought that you were in there because there was a Holy Ghost revival for three hours, but no, one hour of that was we still need some more. Now, come on, saints. These lights are expensive. We're going to need some more. Or, 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 or uh, th there was, there, there was a, 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 a very uh, tangible move of God where you really felt his presence. But at the end of that message and, and feeling God's presence, then there was an appeal based on you feeling something. You should now give something. So wait, I got to pay for my dad to show up? I'm going to just let that marinate real quick. So. so God came in, my dad came into his house that we said that we created for him. We created a space for him to, to, to come in so we could feel his presence. And now that he showed up, I need to give $1,000. Paul was very, very clear. I'm here to take a gift, but I don't want you to give it reluctantly or in response to pressure. That should free anybody for the rest of your life. No matter what you hear, if, if somebody says, I think everybody in this building should give $10,000, you should just be like, you know what? That's not my word. <laughs> Amen, that's gotta be, it's probably somebody in here, but uh, I know what's in my account. He ain't talking to me. You don't give reluctantly. You don't give in response to pressure. You give out of your heart. Because he made it very, very, very clear. God loves a cheerful giver. If you have ever been in a, in, in a, in a worship service and, and the offering plate came around and you went like this, mm. put your hand back in that plate, take your dollar back. And hold on to it, because if you gave it like that, don't give it. If you're giving it reluctantly, like, oh, ah, then don't give it. If it's in response to pressure, we're not going to move into service till we get 33 extra hundred dollars. Act like you're going to the bathroom. <laughs> just fade, like just... Why she take her purse and her coat to the bathroom? <laughs> because she's not coming back. <laughs> see, 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 I, I want to I wanna free people up w w when it comes to hearing a message on giving. So, uh, there, 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 there's, uh, without me taking a poll, I, I know that there's some trauma in this room even behind a message on giving. <gasps> Watch yourself. I'm sensitive. This is my second to last church that I'm going to try out. <laughs> don't mess this up. <laughs> Been coming for three months. Don't ruin the good thing, man. I'm trying to free you up. G giving, giving shouldn't be reluctant. It shouldn't be based on pressure. It should be coming from a cheerful heart. So, so there's some things that I want you to understand about giving. Uh, and, and the first thing, because I have to clear this up every single time, point number one, please write this down. Giving and tithing are two different things. I, I need to say this up front because there's, 
there, there's a lot of people that think giving and tithing are the same thing. They're not the same thing. So when I'm talking about the grace to give, I'm not talking about tithing. Tithing is completely different from giving. Now, uh, uh, the, the, it's 2019, and, and, and there's, there, there's more people that, that, are, that, are, that are searching Scripture than ever before and, and, and have a lot of access to them uh, uh, available on uh, Google and, and, and a lot of uh, church databases and websites and arguments and debates. And, and I'm not here to debate uh, with you theologically whether you believe the tithe is right or wrong. What I'm here to tell you is that tithing is a principle that I have followed and we have followed as a church, and as a result of it, God has blessed us. Now, uh, I want to show you some scripture, and this is a scripture that, that, that could be nuclear for some of you all because it's been abused so much, but I want to put it in the context so that you understand what we're talking about. The, the first thing under uh, that point, giving and tithing are two different things that I, that, I, that I want you to put as a bullet is you return the tithe. That's so all you can do with the tithe is return it. You actually don't give a tithe to the Lord. The only thing you can do is return it because it was never yours to begin with anyway. That when, you, when, when, when God blesses you financially, that we return to him what was already his to begin with because it all belongs to the Lord. Some people that have taught about the tithe has, has, has uh, uh, made it seem like uh, uh, the 10% belongs to the Lord. Well, really, all your money belongs to the Lord. What he sees in your heart by giving back the 10% is where your heart lies as it relates to what has come in. Here's what it says in uh, Malachi chapter number 3, verse number 10. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, now, now, now this, I love this. He said, if. It's your choice. You cannot do it if you don't want to. But if you do do it, says the Lord of heaven's armies, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. Now, I distinctly remember Scripture saying that you can't test the Lord. Except God says, I'll give you one place to test me. <laughs> the only place you can actually test me is with the tithe. And I'll prove it to you. Any, place, any other place you try to test me, I'm going to just leave you out there. Don't get on 635 and pray not to get hit. You're going to get hit. Okay. But, but if, if you want a place to test me, the only place you can test me is with the tithe. Now, he, here's why there, there's been so much trauma behind this scripture. is because people have erroneously said that if you don't tithe, then you'll be cursed. Well, that's just, ah! now I'm scared because I'm about to get a voodoo hex put on me if I don't give 10%. Here's the context of the scripture. If you don't tithe, you're already under a curse. Tithing removes the curse. It's not you'll be cursed if you don't tithe. You are already under a curse. When you tithe, you remove that curse. In the same way you were born in sin and shaping in iniquity, you were already a sinner. When you were born again, you are now made righteous. The curse is removed. In the same way with your giving, with your tithe, when you return it to the Lord, here's what he says. Now that curse is removed. Over your finances, the enemy's not going to be able to come in in that way anymore. So, so the first part of that is that you return the, part, the tithe. Here's the second bullet point. You give an offering. You return the tithe, but you give an offering, and my favorite giving passage in the entire Bible is found in the book of Exodus. This completely disrupts all of the people that say tithing is an Old Testament thing and, and uh, it's not for the New Testament church. And, and so I like to go uh, to the Old Testament to talk about giving since they say giving is all, is all New Testament and, and tithing's all Old Testament. I'm like, well, I'm going to show you my favorite giving scripture in the Old Testament. Or now you're going to say that that's in the Old Testament too? 
The other part for those that debate about uh, uh, the tithe being in the Old Testament is, okay, if giving's in the New Testament, they brought everything. Not 10%, 100%. So, you gonna come off that car or nah? <laughs> I'm sorry. Here's what it says in Exodus chapter number 35. Uh, uh, starting at the uh, fifth verse, and I'm going to read some key passages. Uh, Moses goes to the entire congregation of Israel. Here's what it says. Take a sacred, what? Offering for the Lord. Let those with generous hearts present the following gifts to the Lord. And it was all types of gifts. There was gold, there was silver, there was goat hair. I mean, talk about getting in on an offering. You don't have no gold, you don't have no uh, silver. Cool, I got a goat, though. <laughs> Get them clippers out, honey. We're going to give an offering today. It was meant for everybody to be able to participate. See, see here, here's the part with making an offering appeal uh, uh, forceful, manipulative, controlling, or specific. Is you block people's hearts from hearing from God because they can only hear from you. So if you walk in the door and say, I would like everybody to give here, everybody in here to give $100, and God had already told a person in the morning, I'm going to give $10,000 today. And then they say, hey, we just want everybody in here to give $100. That person goes, sweet. I just saved $9,900. Lord, they said. No, you just make the appeal. So he makes the appeal, and it says, let those with what? Generous hearts. Present the following gifts to the Lord. Now, they all started bringing all of this stuff. And here's what it says, uh, dropping down to the 20, 20th verse through the 22nd verse. So the whole community of Israel left Moses and returned to their tents. Here's what I love about this offering appeal. He gives the offering appeal to the whole community of Israel, and they go home. They don't give right then. They actually go home to think about it and to pray about it. The entire a community of Israel left Moses and returned to their tents. Here's what it says next. All whose hearts were stirred. Can I just stop right there? It didn't say the whole community returned. It didn't say everybody gave. It said all whose hearts were stirred. Will you say that with me? All whose hearts were stirred. One more time real loud. All whose hearts were stirred. God has never needed 100% participation to get his purpose and will into the earth. All he's ever needed is some people whose hearts were stirred. He has never needed everybody to do something. He just needs some faithful people to do what they're supposed to do. And he goes, I'll bless that right there. All whose hearts were stirred uh, uh, and whose spirits were moved came and brought their sacred offerings to the Lord. They brought all the materials needed uh, for the tabernacle, for the performance of its rituals, and for the sacred garments. Uh, both men and women came, all whose hearts were willing. Do you see how plain this is? Okay, now drop down to verse number 29. So the people of Israel, every man and woman who was eager to help in the work the Lord had given them through Moses, brought their gifts and gave them what? Freely to the Lord. Who were they giving it to? Not the person. Not to Moses. To the Lord. And they could see where their giving went to. I'm going to leave that alone. So, so they kept bringing. They, they, it never said all the community. It just said th those people kept, kept bringing. Now, now, here's what it says in Exodus chapter number 36, uh, verses 3 through 7. Moses gave, gave them, and who is them? Them is Bezalel and Aholiab. I just love those two names. Bezalel and Aholiab. Name your next child. Bezalel. You want them to have a strong name? What's your kid's name? Aholiab Johnson. <laughs> oh my gosh. What's your kid's name? Bezalel Ross. It's a gangster name, yo. Moses gave them the materials donated by the people of Israel and sacred offerings for the completion of the sanctuary. This one right here, though? But the people continue to bring additional gifts each morning because you can't shut off the heart of a giver. Those jokers started giving. They said, you didn't say stop. 
And another one. And another one. They, the people that could give goat hair kept bringing goat hair. The people that could give gold kept bringing gold. The people that could give wood kept bringing wood. You cannot shut off the heart of a giver. So they kept bringing it each morning. Uh, Finally, the craftsmen who were working on the sanctuary left their work. They went to Moses and reported, the people have given more than enough materials to complete the job the Lord has commanded us to do. With an exclamation mark, they was exasperated by the giving. Tell, stop. So Moses gave the command, and this message was sent throughout the camp. Men and women, don't prepare any more gifts for the sanctuary. We have enough. Listen, can you imagine a lead pastor coming out and say, hey, man, that whole building fund thing, y'all are obnoxious. Please stop. We asked for $2 million. You gave 17 What are you doing? Stop yourselves. My goodness. We have enough. Well, you don't hear most lead pastors saying that because every week it sounds like you still need some more. You never have enough. We still need some more. You got to take a second offering, a third offering, a fourth offering, a special this atmosphere is anointed offering. A special, I feel a breakthrough coming offering? A, I'm about to turn it around so you don't go down offering? Oh, now your offerings rhyme now? (laughs) Sir, are you not tired of trying to come up with 52 ways? 52 weekends. Somebody's trying to get up 52 weekends in a row and convince you to give. Disciples of Jesus Christ trying to convince people to tithe every single weekend. No, we have enough. And the people was like, oh, okay. So the people stopped bringing their sacred gifts, their sacred offerings. Their contributions were what? More than enough to complete the whole project. It's just good stuff. Which brings me to point number two. Please write this down. No, no, no. Oh, th- those, were, those were bullet points uh, under point number one. I love y'all. Y'all tracking. Y'all like, hold on, man. You on four. <laughs> I love y'all. Y'all, woo! Nerds with a rail. Y'all no taking over there. You like, uh, huh, here. Yeah. Point four, huh? <laughs> Listen, I love it. I love it. Listen, when your residents correct you, when you trying to teach your message, I love all, everybody over here is my favorite today. So that was point one, okay? The bullet point under point one was you return the tithe, okay? The second bullet point under point one was you give an offering, but that's still point one. Do I have permission from the right side? May I proceed to give you what you need? We good? Okay, all right, all right. Point number two, (laughs) there's two types of giving, okay? Point number two is there are two types of giving. Now, these next three things I say are not points. (laughs) I love y'all. Okay, here's here's, here's the first one under those two types. Whatever you want. There's two types of giving. The first type of giving is whatever you want. And, and the whatever you want type of giving is, is carefree. Okay? It's, it's going to be convenient for you, and it's going to be comfortable for you. A whatever you want gift is, is, is hey, I got it. You, you, you pull off any uh, uh, highway, and, and you see somebody holding a sign, and, and you're like, I got five bucks. And you roll down the window, here you go, man, God bless you. It was carefree. It was convenient. It was comfortable. It was just in your, in, in your uh, glove compartment or in the, in the little center console of, of, of your uh, 
of your car, you had a few bucks, pull it out the window, give it to them, hey man, God bless you, I'm out. You might have a stack full of 20s, and, and you, you pull over, okay, here's that. You, you tip the valet five bucks, it's carefree, it's convenient, it's comfortable. It's a whatever you want offering. You give, you give an offering in church, and you're just like, hey, yeah, plate comes by, and you're, you're like, well, not here, but uh, uh, if a plate goes by somewhere that you're visiting, and then <laughs> you're like, hey, mm, there it is, okay? It's, it's just a carefree, it's convenient, it's comfortable, so whatever you want, offer, okay? The second type of offering for a believer is uh, uh, whatever God wants. It's a whatever he wants offering. And, and, and a whatever he wants offering uh, is, is usually... Uh, uh, comes with some sentimentality. There's, there's a sentimental element to it. He touches your heart. He gives you, he, he breaks your heart for, for a, a, a purpose, a cause, a mission, an endeavor. So there's some sentiment behind it. The other uh, 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 feeling you'll have is, is that it's sacrificial. How many people have ever given a sacrificial offering? You knew it was sacrificial because you was like, dang, Lord have mercy. Wow, thought we were going on vacation. I guess we're not. Sacrificial. And, 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 the, and the, last, the, the last thing that it could be is sensational. It's, it's one of those sensational, spectacular things that you are literally like, wow, this is extravagant. I, Lord, I didn't know that you were going to ask me to do this, but, but I'm so grateful that I'm in a position to do this. I, I, I didn't know that, that, that this was coming, that, that you would even put me in a position to ever be able to do it, but now that I'm in a position, ah, it's amazing. Whatever he wants offering is sentimental, it is sacrificial, and it is sensational. So here's what I want you to know. Please write this statement down. Embassy City has the gift of giving. This is why the Lord put this on my heart to, to share with you, because I want you to know who you are. I want you to know how spectacular you are. I want you to know how sensational, sacrificial, and sentiment, sentimental your giving has been to this church. Over and above your tithe. We have some faithful tithers at this church, but your giving even over and above your tithe has put us as a church in a position to do some things that we never thought we'd be able to do. Here's a, here's a context to what it is to have a gift. Uh, in Romans chapter number 12, verse number eight, it says this. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you the ability giving you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously, and if you have a gift of showing kindness to others, do it gladly. This is what we refer to as the administrative gift. And there's more than just that verse, but, but, but that, that one statement right there, that, that if you have the gift to give, then give generously. And, and, and some people have the gift of giving. I have a gift of giving. My, my mother has a gift of giving. This was put into me at a very, very young age, transferred to me at a very, very young age. My mother used to work at the LAPD, and um, uh, uh, she, she would take the bus uh, into the city and then have to walk uh, a few blocks to get to uh, Parker Center. And uh, so on, on certain uh, days, she would put me and my younger brother, Miles, in an assembly line, and we would make triple-decker peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for the homeless people. And we would put them into bags. I think we would put two to a bag. And the reason why my mom gave them peanut butter and jelly sandwiches is because uh, they would really stick to their ribs. It's a, it's a, it's a carb-heavy meal, uh, and it would be, be something to keep them full for a longer period of time. And she would roll those bags up, 10, 15 bags sometimes, put them in a larger bag. And when she would get off of uh, the bus on her way to Parker Center, she has to pass Skid Row. And so there'd be countless amounts of homeless people sleeping on uh, uh, the bus benches and sleeping on the ground. And she would just go up to them very gently, never wake them up, and just put bags of food near all of them. Again, when you have a heart of giving, it doesn't always mean that you're making it rain. 
It just means you can't stop me. If I have gold, I'll give gold. If I have silver, I give silver. If I have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, I'm giving you a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. If I have an extra coat, you now have a coat. So it's not always money. It's just, is your heart primed and open to give? A gift of giving means that you have that. And our church has that. Here, here, here uh, uh, is, is what I want to tell you, and we read this in uh, 2 Corinthians. Uh, when we give, two things happen. When we give, I know I, know I got a lot of points around here this time. Y'all are like, y'all are messing up my flow, Tim. One, two, three, man, not today. Um, uh, when we give, two things happen. Number one, we meet needs. And I, and I love when we get to meet a need. Not, not, not a want, but a need. But number two is they thank God. Listen, you ever given somebody something and they went, man, God bless you. Or, oh, thank, thank you, Lord. It doesn't even come back to you. It's the fact that we get to give something to somebody else that might turn their heart toward God. It's been one of the most thrilling things you could ever have happen in your entire life. Here's what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter number 9, verse number 12. So two good things will result from this ministry of giving. The needs of the believers in Jerusalem will be met, and they will joyfully express their thanks to God. Again, we get to meet a need. On the other side, they will thank God. So two weeks ago, I was in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, uh, and uh, my friend Mike Todd, who, who I happen to uh, apostolically oversee their church, Transformation Church, uh, they had their first conference in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. God had supernaturally uh, opened the door for them to buy the Spirit Bank Arena. The Spirit Bank Arena was built in 2008 for $50 million. It was going to be a, an, attraction, an attractional destination uh, for people to come all around uh, Tulsa and, uh, and that region uh, to uh, uh, have entertainment. Uh, they had a, a big arena in there where they had G League uh, uh, NBA teams that played, uh, and they had concerts in there. And the Holy Spirit gave uh, Michael word, I believe, in 2013 that God was going to give him that building. I just want you to imagine, he wasn't even pastoring yet. God said he was going to give him that building. And, and so uh, uh, as the, their church grew, when he became the senior pastor, the church began to grow uh, from 450 people uh, to about uh, uh, 5,000 people in two years. And, and, and this building came up for sale, and they kept telling them that they could not get that building, and they kept saying, we're going to keep asking. Well, a, a group, kind of like a Dave & Buster's group, came in. They were going to buy the building. And they were going to turn it into more of like an entertainment fund destination for people to come to. And on the day they were supposed to close, the funding went through. And so they called Mike's team and said, do you want the building? They said, yes, we want it now. A building that cost, two, uh, that cost $50 million in 2008 was sold to Transformation Church to $10.5 million. And they got that building. Because they were good stewards of their money as the church began to grow, they put $4 million down on the building when they walked in. Now that's stewardship right there. So they get in the building, they have this conference, and on the second night of the conference, I was supposed to preach, but I couldn't preach. The Holy Spirit was doing some amazing things in the room. And because he was doing amazing things in the room, and because it's his church and not mine, I was like, yeah, no, I'm not getting into that. <laughs> Worship kept going and going and going, and Mike came backstage, and he was like, uh, I don't know what to do. Uh, I, you know, I don't want to interrupt this flow. I didn't even say anything to him. I just looked at him like, bro, if you think I'm going to say something, you have me severely confused. So he runs back up to the platform. The Holy Spirit's still moving. People are still in worship. And I tell you, people from all over the country were there. All 50 states were represented. 30 countries from around the world, including Saudi Arabia. I don't know how anybody in Saudi Arabia heard about the gospel being preached by this young boy, but it was happening. So... Wednesday night, I did not preach. The Holy Spirit told me to take off my shoes and my socks. I took off my shoes and my socks. I'm standing on cold concrete backstage. And the only thing I heard to share with Mike was that he cannot go back to the old building. They were only supposed to be there for the conference. They were going to go back to their other location. The Holy Spirit told me, you can't go back to this old building. 
Mike wanted to um, uh, update the building and get it up to what he referred to as state of the art before he moved in. And here's the word that the Lord gave me to give Mike. Hey, Mike, I know that you wanted to wait until this building was state of the art before you moved in. But tonight, God said that this worship is state of the art and he moved in. He received that word, and the next day he told, he told the entire conference uh, who he did not raise offerings at, at this conference. They had a registration, and uh, uh, they did everything that they were supposed to do off the registration. The next day, he said, hey, I'm raising an offering because the things that we've rented to be in this building, we now have to purchase to stay in this building. And anything that you give could help us out. And I gave him the scripture of Exodus 35, and that's the, that's the uh, appeal that he gave to the congregation. And I went back and sat down and said, okay, Lord, what... Uh, actually, thank you, Holy Spirit, checking me. Uh, uh, I, I, I really didn't ask the Lord. The elders give me permission to give $10,000 to, to any cause that, that, that my heart is, is moved towards uh, for, for advancing the kingdom. And so since they gave, since they gave me $10,000 automatically, I just wanted to check in with them and let them know, hey, I'm going to give $10,000 to this cause. And the Holy Spirit said, no, 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 that's not what I want you to give. He said, this needs to be the single largest offering that you've ever given in the history of Embassy City Church. And it's not $10,000, it's $100,000. Now, some offerings are sentimental, sacrificial, and sensational. I was like, oh, oh, oh. Our global fund only had $115,000 in it. I was like, do you want me to, I mean, like, like all of it? Or do you want to, like, do it in stages? Because, you know, stages are good. And two out of the three elders, like, are business people, and they're going to be like, what? So, like, do you want me to? He said, it needs to be the largest offering that you've ever given. And so I, I, I emailed the, the elders, and I was like, hey. Um, here's what I think. And their response was, this is the Lord. We have an apostolic mandate, and we have to do this. He's literally reaching the world, and it's called the Global Fund. Let's give to a church that we're in covenant with that is literally reaching the world. That's what we've been made to do is to upset the world. Let's upset them so they can continue to transform lives. I was like, I didn't think y'all was going to respond that fast. <laughs> but okay. So we went to the bank with the wiring instructions to Transformation Church. And we gave the single largest offering that we've ever given in the history of our church. Mike wanted to say thank you. So here it is. Embassy City Church, this is Pastor Mike, and I want to say greetings, salutation, what up though, from Tulsa, Oklahoma, here at Transformation Church. Man, I have to just take a moment and just say thank you. I am overwhelmed at the thought of what you did, and some of y'all are like, what did we do? What you did is you believed and sowed and were faithful into a vision at your church that has now touched the world. Your pastor and your generosity has sown a significant seed into our church at a time where we're stepping out in crazy faith. And I can't tell you what you're doing right now has literally made us believe God at a whole nother level. You've given us $100,000 to right behind me facilitate the stage and the lighting and, and, and all of the things that have to take for us to take this message to the world. And it's that global mission that is in the heart of Embassy City Church and your leaders, Pastor Tim and Juliet, that allows us to do it. I wanna say out of everybody in the world, thank you to you, Embassy City Church. We are a kingdom that is better together. And you've proved that through your irrational generosity and Transformation Church, everything that happens here is linked to your generosity. Thank you, we love you. If you can't give God a praise off of that, then your whole praiser is broken. <laughs> so
So, so I got, I, I got a couple of more things that, that, that I want to say. Acts chapter number 20, verse 35 says this. And I have been a constant example of how you can help those in need by working hard. This is Paul talking, not me. <laughs> you should remember the words of the Lord Jesus. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Now, now here's the thing that's amazing about this. Uh, if you read this in, in your digital Bible, it should come up in red. If it doesn't, get a new one. Uh, uh, and if you, have a, if you have a physical Bible, the, those words, it is more blessed to give than to receive. You can't find them in the Gospels. But, but, but as Luke is writing this and, 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 he's, and, and he's talking to Paul, it's written in red. This was a statement that Jesus made. It didn't, it didn't make it to the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but it's in red in the book of Acts as the Holy Spirit is moving to let us know it is far more blessed to give than to receive. As amazing as it was for them to receive it, here's what the Lord said. Guess who's more blessed? The giver is even more blessed to be able to give it than the person who gets to receive it. So uh, uh, I just wanted to recap with you all. This is something that, 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 that we normally do not get to do, but, but I have to stop and celebrate the type of heart that you had because you didn't just get this heart. We started with a heart like this when we first started this church. So, so I want to show you between 2015 all the way up to where we are now, how God has used us to be a blessing uh, to people, okay? Uh, uh, 2015, our benevolence was close to $19,000. Our donations and missions was $16,300. The gifts that we've given people for weddings, funerals, cars, just to be a blessing to them. In three months, we gave nearly $39,000 as a church. In three months, we started in September, going only through December 31st. That's how much we gave as a church in the first three months of our existence. 2016. Like, I'm not going to even, I'm just, I'm just looking with y'all. Like, dang. Now, now, here's the thing that's crazy about 2016. What makes 2016 crazy is we were, uh, eight out of the 12 months, we were meeting on Saturday nights at five, and we only had an adult uh, 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 residency of about 250 people. Our missions and donations was $253,000 from 250 people. Nobody in here plays basketball. And if you do, you are low-key for real. <laughs> like, we don't even see you play for the Mavericks. That's how low-key you are, okay? Nobody in here plays baseball. Nobody in here plays football. This is just an extravagantly giving church. Giving, because this is what we do. We don't even talk about it much. This is my first time teaching on giving this year. I haven't talked about it all year. 2017? $146,000, that's when we came back with one service. 2018, two services. 27, 92, eight, and then, yeah, oh, that's 2018. Yes, yeah, 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 92 and eight, 128,000. 2019, this is just through September, y'all. What? 149. That's just through this month. We still in September right now. 246. And this is our total since we started the church. Four years and close to $852,000. That doesn't come from us yelling at you for a $1,000 seed. That doesn't come from us manipulating an atmosphere and then having a $1,000 line, a $5,000 line, and a $10,000 line. That simply comes from you hearing God and obeying whatever he tells you to do. I'm telling you, church, for God to put us in a position to give $100,000 without blinking, 
It means that he's preparing us to give our first million dollar offering without blinking. I remember when finances were low at Embassy City and our burn rate uh, said that we probably had less than 90 days before we would have to close our doors. I chose not to manipulate. I chose not to raise an offering or do anything. Instead, I took that sheet that showed us the facts. And I got on my knees. I asked God to bless you. I asked God to give you jobs. I asked him to give you promotions. I asked him to give you bonuses. I asked him to bless you in unusual ways. Because I knew that if God blessed you, he would bless this church. It's extravagant what we've been able to do. I didn't do it. We did it. And because that grace is on us, we get to upset him. Did you give God praise and glory for what he has done?